Welcome to the joy of music. Today we bring you a program entitled A Musical Journey of England. From cathedrals, churches, castles, and palaces, we bring you celebration and pageantry as found only in this beautiful country of England. All on the joy of music. London, Britain's lively capital, is one of the most exciting cities in the world and is renowned for its pomp and ceremony. Perhaps one of the best examples of color and pageantry is the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace, the London home of the Queen. The guard marches from Wellington Barracks to the palace every morning from April through July. Born in England in 1659, Henry Purcell is recognized as a favorite English composer. He wrote much religious music, such as anthems, cantatas, service music, music for choir and orchestra, and of course, music for organ. During his early years, Purcell was a boy chorister in the Chapel Royal, and later served as organist for Westminster Abbey. Purcell died in 1695 after a most successful musical career. Our next musical stop on our journey takes us to Wells Cathedral in beautiful Somerset, England. We are welcomed by green, gracious lawns and tranquil springs of water. The surrounding beauty and bustle of the town market blend delightfully 
with music from the great cathedral organ and outstanding boy choir. Wells Cathedral, one of England's most beautiful churches, was established as a Christian mission about 700 AD, close to the springs which fill the wells of St. Andrew. By 1150, it was found to be too small for its purpose, and the present church began to rise around 1180 in the austere style called Early English. The cathedral seeks to maintain the highest standards in its offering to God in music, architecture, ornament, as well as education, and to provide a mother church for Somerset, recognized as the birthplace of English Christianity. The earliest reference to an organ at Wells Cathedral occurs on Ascension Day in 1310. There were numerous organs and rebuilding of organs from those early days until today. The present organ was rebuilt between 1973 and 74 and was rededicated on Easter Day, 1974. The Wells Cathedral organ contains 4,630 pipes and 68 speaking stops.
We leave the festive atmosphere of Wells and travel northeast to Coventry Cathedral, where we are reminded as we see the ruins of the old cathedral of the stark reality of war's desolation. One of the most dramatic landmarks in all of England is found in Coventry with its two cathedrals, one old and one new. The first church was built on this site as a Benedictine monastery in 1043. Then in the 12th century, the great St. Michael's Cathedral was built. However, it was destroyed during World War II. And a new cathedral was built and dedicated in 1962. The ruins of the old cathedral still stand, and at one end we read these words, Father forgive, as a reminder of the ravages of war. Set in the charm of the English countryside is Blenheim Palace. The palace was built for John Churchill, first Duke of Marlborough, in recognition of his great victory over the French at the Battle of Blenheim in 1704. The palace, birthplace of Sir Winston Churchill, is set in over 2,000 acres of parkland. The present Duke of Marlborough resides here today.
Situated at the north end of the long library here at the Blenheim Palace is an amazing four manual 52 stop organ built by Henry Willis and Sons in 1891 and 92 at the request of the 8th Duke of Marlborough. This beautiful display of wooden pipes of pine and swell boxes of mahogany is fitting for this noble setting. The organ is used for many musical occasions held here in the library. Inscribed above the organ keyboards here at Blenheim Palace are found these words. The memory of happy days, and as a tribute to this glorious home, we leave thy voice to speak within these walls in years to come, when ours are still. We return to London for the final stop of our musical journey. Home of many renowned composers and musicians, 
perhaps none as beloved as George Friedrich Handel. Here at 25 Brook Street in London, George Friedrich Handel wrote his famous oratorio, Messiah. I think I did see all heaven before me and the great God himself. Handel reportedly reacted to his Messiah, suggesting it was the product of fevered inspiration. He completed this mammoth project in just 24 days. Perhaps no other composition radiates as much light as Messiah. Handel's work inspires us, leaves us fulfilled, cleansed, and exalted. Today on The Joy of Music, we have brought you a musical journey of England. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. If you would like to purchase today's program or any program in our library of over 400 videos and CDs from the great organs and historic churches of the world, please call 1-800-933-4844. We hope to hear from you.